Well, hello and welcome. I hope this video is finding you all in good spirits and in good health. Um, if you're one of my returning viewers, one of my wonderful, wonderful subscribers, and we're becoming quite a little community right now. Um, it is so good to have you along for the ride. I enjoyed my vacation very much, but it's glad to get back to the cards and the cats. Yes. This is Mr. Lockie, and every once in a while, he, uh, he won't let me out of his sight, or really was outside of Paw Reach, and hasn't since we got back. By the way, Alaska is gorgeous. However, it is five time zones west of me, and holy cow, jet lag is a thing. Um, <clears throat> but let's get down to the brass tacks of this reading. Now, i got a little confession to make. I actually pulled the cards on this question yesterday. I had it all filmed and uploaded and ready to roll. And then last night, I sat down and I watched the January 6th uh, select committee hearing, and I thought I was a little too harsh. The question that I had, and that what I am redoing here now, is, is the Secret Service deeply, deeply corrupted? Now, the Secret Service is kind of a bit of a, an odd character. It is the oldest law enforcement agency in the United States, and because of that, it has experienced a very protective shelter, if you will, from the kind of government scrutiny that we expect in, you know, the 21st century, in modern times. Um, now, there are several branches to the Secret Service. Um, there's uh, the primary purpose and what they were created for was for uh, counterfeiting and protecting the U.S. currency and that has expanded, ex expanded into all kinds of uh, financial crime situations. Um, but what we mostly know of them and certainly in the context of this reading is their diplomatic protection service. Um, I am, of course, looking at the, the whale of a tale that's come out of the Secret Service, stating that in the most important historic attack on the United States in the last 150 years, um, in the insurrection that was attempted in January 2021, somehow, by some miracle, or just, you know, an oops, they lost all the text messages between the agents on the protective detail. It was supposedly some kind of planned migration from one phone system to another, and, oh, we forgot to back it up, or we really didn't make sure things were backed up, and oops, it's gone. Well, like most of the world, my bullshit meter went tilt. It's like, it's not even possible. However, uh, Halen's razor comes to mind, and that is the expression, never attribute to malice, which is adequately explained by stupidity. And I thought maybe that I would pull the cards and to see whether or not this is a situation under which people just made small mistakes and they kind of multiplied and it really truly was an accidental loss of the data on the two most important days of U.S. history in the last 150 years. Oops, we don't know. Or whether there is malice and that. This comes from a deeply corrupted service. Now, there have been a history of shenanigans on the part of the Secret Service that have been documented before, and they are also have, like I said, they're very protected from kind of government scrutiny. Um, times when they probably should have been put under an investigation for things that happened, their inspector general managed to stick handle that and put a stop to it. Um, I'm thinking one of the circumstances that I kind of remember, and I haven't looked up the details on it, uh, but it's in the back of my mind, was during the Obama uh, presidency 
we had a situation where they were on an uh, international diplomatic mission to uh, South America. I think it might have been Brazil. And the behavior of the secret agents um, was completely, completely unprofessional uh, and a disgrace to the United States. They were uh, using their position as a means of like shaking down prostitutes. In other words, they would prevail themselves, or at least one guy did prevail themselves with their services, uh, and then refuse to pay him. What are you going to do about it? Because I'm a Secret Service agent, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, really, 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 truly uh, egregious behavior. And this can be part on any kind of an organization like that. I mean, they got a tough job. There's no two ways about it. I mean, their job description is, I'll take a bullet for somebody. And yes, there there's a little bit of slack cut on it. But there's part of this, and I think this is what people are fearful of, that there's a part of a, a feeling that their proximity to power, their proximity to the president, makes them above the law. And this is one of the questions that comes out of this whole lost text message thing. There is a requirement for all, all government employees in the United States to maintain government records. It is drilled into you from day one uh, of your job. And for a group of individuals who decided that they're, oh, oops, not going to back up their phones and maintain the data that they are required by law to do so, kind of falls into this whole idea of proximity to power makes us above the law mindset. So the question that I've put into for the cards is, is the Secret Service corrupted? Or was this truly an accident? Is this a case of stupidity? Or is this malice? So, uh, once again, using the jolt, or I call it the jolt, it's jack-o'-lantern tarot. The jack-o'-lantern tarot by Guiliano Costa. I bought it on a whim, and I just love that deck. It's so easy to read. I'm really enjoying it. I got a couple of other decks while I was on vacation. My mailbox was full when I got home. Uh, and I'll be doing reviews on those later on. The opening card for this reading, the subject of it, is the Two of Wands. Well, the Two of Wands is about planning, vision, control, um, making a clear action plan, deciding how you're going to get from point A to point B. It's that whole idea of making a roadmap. And it is crossed by the Two of Pentacles in its reversed position. And that is a card that's about uh, overextension, being stretched too thin, uh, trying to manage too many things at once, uh, and the need to bring things back into balance. Interesting set of cards to open up this kind of a reading with. And what it does tell me is that we're probably going to be looking at moving the stupidity element of Hanlon's razor off the table because I think that this indicates these opening cards anyways that there is uh, some planning involved. <clears throat> in the conscious thoughts we have the Ace of Swords also in a reverse position and the Ace of Swords reversed is about overthinking, uh, irrationality, clouded judgment, overthinking a problem, allowing irrationality to rule the mind, um, these kind of ideas. Uh, being emotional and acting from emotions when really logic needs to rule the day. That's the Ace of Swords reversed in the conscious thoughts position. And in the subconscious thoughts, we have the King of Pentacles. Also in a reverse position, the King of Pentacles reversed is uh, an outward looking energy, but it is very much a kind of a lazy, 
um, kind of energy. It can be indicate a need for uh, self-discipline, uh, people not willing to put into the effort, um, being bored or just kind of lackadaisical about the day-to-day -day grind, and generally being undependable. Again, not a great look for the service. The tower is in the near past position. Certainly January 6th would have been a tower moment for the Secret Service. Uh, what really kind of rocked me back on my heels last night is when I was listening to uh, the radio broadcasts of the protection detail for the vice president. And when they were requesting last messages to be sent to their families, it's because they didn't think they were going to live. They thought that they were going to die that day on duty, protecting the vice president. That's why I, I had to pull the reading, right? I got very some of the, some of the similar cards, but I just I just could not be as harsh or that's it. The lack of nuance in how I had read the cards in the previous reading was a bit much for me to take. So you know the Tower Mono it, it is about that chaos, calamity, disaster, destruction, revolution. You know. Uh, I'll, <laughs> on and on and on. Um, it's also about a big change coming or an awakening, something that shakes you out of your stupor, something that, you know, um, shocking information that comes to light that kind of snaps you out of the fog and gets you uh, going in the right direction. That can also be a tower moment. And I'm hoping that that's what this one represents. In the near future, we have the Five of Swords. Five of Swords, like all fives, are about competition. But it's, um, this is about competition, conflict. It's also a sense uh, with it, a sense of being defeated or feeling defeated and, and a need to choose your battles wisely. Um, it can be about acting too aggressive. It can also get into the whole like, bullying kind of behavior or dirty office politics, hello, and um, constant bickering over things and whether or not you know when to, to walk away. But that really, that whole winning at all costs kind of attitude, um, that is very much this five of swords kind of energy. Now how the subject sees himself, we have the hanged man. Now, we often read that card as being, you know, contemplation and surrender and new perspective and that sort of stuff. But it really fundamentally at its base is a, about self-sacrifice for a greater good. And what better description would you have for members of the Secret Service protection detail? They are literally willing to put themselves between a bullet and their protectee. Um, it, it's an enormously difficult job. They spend a lot of time traveling. They spend a lot of time away from the family. Um, they are not particularly well compensated. I mean, they get paid a lot of overtime and that kind of bumps their salary up, but they are really not, uh, put this way, you'd have to pay me a whole lot more money to be willing to stand in front of a bullet for somebody else than what they get paid. Um, and I think that that needs to be taken into consideration, but that is how they look at themselves. They have this agency myth about being kind of superheroes and this idea of self-sacrifice. The problem with those myths of our own, own generation is that they can often blind us from what we need to see. So that whole idea of needing to see things from a new perspective, it probably applies. How other people see the agency or the environment in which it is, and we have the fool in a reverse position, and the fool in a reverse position is foolish. It's about making bad decisions. It's about 
not thinking things through is or it can be about over analyzing a situation it can be about playing things safe like you don't want to deal with conflict you don't want to deal with the ramifications and the consequences of something so you kind of sweep it away and you kind of sweep it away the problem is is when those smaller conflicts come up and we do have um, a highly politicized secret service in the presidential office under the trump administration um, probably more politicized than it's ever been and without having rooted out those little things over the years and weeded out this out of the culture it's been allowed to fester and now we have Literally. a boil in the hopes and fears we have the four of pentacles in a reverse position and the four of pentacles normally is known as the miser card and it's about holding on to everything, but when it's in its reverse position, it's about somebody letting go of that need to, for control, that need to hang on to things, to dictate how it's going to go, and to, to, you know, micromanage everything around. That is a fear that upper echelons that of the Secret Service management types are going to have right now. That one of the the troopies, one of the you know guys on the grounds, one of the frontline agents, are going to have enough of this nonsense, and they're going to say, "The hell with it," and they're going to spill the tea, and that is one of the things that definitely uh, the higher echelons of the Secret Service are particularly afraid of. That somebody's going to come out and say, "That's it, we're done. I didn't accidentally lose my text messages." This was done deliberately. And the final card in this reading is the Seven of Wands. The Seven of Wands is about, you know, a challenge and tenacity. Um, it's about defending your position. But it's also about standing up for what you believe in. It's uh, standing up to bullies. It's uh, the people that are trying to knock you off your pedestal. Um, it's about being a target of jealousy and I think that this is very much that we're going to have those people in the Secret Service who are not happy with the politicization of the office um, are going to be standing up against those individuals who have really uh, career gamed their service um, with the political with the political power that they have and i mean there has been plenty of written about uh how many people on in the secret service were really contaminated by the political notions of trumpism now it's nothing wrong with being a republican and a member of the secret service but it was that whole you're supposed to be when you're at work you're supposed to be kind of hands hands off or arm's length distance and that has gone away uh, reports of uh, special agents being really strong mega supporters mega hats in secret service offices etc etc just not acceptable in that kind of an organization there is a reason why mike pence at the moment of crisis refused to go with the secret service what does he know? He'll probably never tell because I don't think the man's got the backbone for it. But he did not trust the Secret Service to look after not just himself. He didn't trust them to do what was right for the nation. I really believe that's why he didn't get in that car. Um, and we have, you know, Joe Biden wouldn't accept the team that had been picked for him. He decided he wanted a new team, and I don't blame it, given the level of politicization. Any hope? Any hope for the the uh, Secret Service? Well, the shadow card in this reading would say yes, that there is Ace of Pentacles. This is about of course, all Pentacles are about um, new beginnings, but this is uh, in the the real world, and it is about manifesting prosperity, abundance. Um, all systems go. A new start, a new 
opportunity and abundance and ability to shine. So to answer my question, do I think that the Secret Service, at least the protection detail, and I'm not talking about the entire agency, I'm talking about that branch of it, are they deeply corrupted and have they been heavily politicized? And I think it's clear that they have been. I do not believe that the loss of the text messages was in any way an accident. Uh, two of Wands at the beginning, you know, the planning it tells me that's what it was. I do think that there is some discord within the Secret Service, um, probably that will come out. I don't think that the Inspector General is willing to or able to protect them from the scrutiny that they are probably going to undergo. I mean, you just don't say I have lost, <laughs> I have lost the central records of the most important day in American history in the last 150 years. Oh, we didn't back our phones up. No, it doesn't fly. Um, so anyways, that's my reading for today, and I will talk at you later. Bye-bye for now.